If you are new to the world of finance or have a friend who's a self-proclaimed financial wizard, then you've likely heard the terms 401k, IRA, HSA, and a few others used interchangeably. Well, these buzzwords aren't government agencies or anything, but they're a part of a special group of investment accounts called tax advantage accounts. These amazing accounts were established in the late 80s to early 2000s for a very important purpose to encourage you to save for large expenses in exchange for some really sweet tax benefits. In a more traditional definition, tax advantage accounts are simply those that offer tax benefits in order to encourage you to save for various purposes. With the number of options we now have, it can be challenging to figure out which of these accounts to use. While they all offer similar benefits, each account has slight differences that could change your financial trajectory. So in today's video, we're going to take an attempt to clear up these differences so that you can make an informed decision on which account to choose. Now, while we've already established that there are some sweet benefits to the tax advantage accounts, they can't and likely shouldn't replace your taxable accounts completely. We'll go through some of the advantages and disadvantages to taxable accounts as well, and how you may want to go about choosing between the two types in general. If you're an average person, you'll likely run into three different types of tax advantage accounts. Retirement accounts, health and education accounts. When it comes to retirement accounts, these offer tax advantages that encourage you to save for, well, you guessed it, retirement. The names you'll hear the most when it comes to these are the 401k, Roth 401k, IRA, and Roth IRA. There are a few others, but these are the most common. Let's start by explaining the Roth designation. By being in a Roth account, that means your account is taxed up front. Think of it like an admission fee. Uncle Sam takes his money first, and then once you're in, you don't have to pay taxes anymore. If the account doesn't have a Roth designation, then you're charged an exit fee. In the exit fee case, Uncle Sam doesn't take the money up front, but takes his money at the very end when you look to withdraw your funds. So if you're getting taxed once either way, then what's the difference, right? Well, a Roth account is left to grow tax-free. This in and of itself is a major advantage as you won't be taxed on capital gains, dividends, or interest received from your investments. In a traditional account, or those without the Roth designation, your advantage is in the tax deferred growth. First, you don't have to pay that pesky entrance fee, so you start with more money in your account. Thanks to the power of compounding, this means that your money will grow faster than it would in a Roth account. Now, this isn't just an automatically better play because now you'll have to pay taxes on everything including the interest, dividends, and capital gains of the account. Those extra taxes could very much outweigh that extra growth in your account. So which one should you choose? Of course, there are many considerations to make when deciding on which version to go with. But in general, for investors who think they'll be in a higher tax bracket or retirement, the Roth accounts are recommended. Seeing that the median income increases as we age, that means that the average person can generally expect to be making more money in their later years. Okay. Now that we've chosen between a traditional or Roth account, we now need to choose between a 401k and an IRA. 401ks are a part of a wider group called employer sponsored plans. If you work for the government, a nonprofit or health organization, then you may have either a 403b or a 457b available to you. These accounts both operate similar to the 401k. The main benefit to choosing an employer sponsored plan is that the employer matches oftentimes. Because employers get a tax benefit, they'll often contribute $1 for every $1 you contribute to your sponsored plan, but only up to a certain percentage of your income. For example, a common employer matches 4%. That means if you make $100,000 a year and you contribute $4,000, the company will contribute $4,000 to your account as well. If you do the math, you can see that $4,000 is equal to 4% of your income. If you decide to contribute $2,000, then your employer will only contribute $2,000. After you hit the $4,000 mark though, you can continue to contribute up to the contribution limit, but the employer will not contribute any more to your account. The current limit on 401k contributions is $23,000 always recommend investing in your 401k up to the match at the very least. It's free money that we don't want to give up. Employer sponsored plans are great first accounts to have. Generally, you'll have a limited set of investment options. While this can be limiting, it makes it easier to choose the right option and your administrator is required to provide you with a diverse group of responsible options as well. Another big benefit is that the contribution limits on employer sponsored plans are much higher than they are for IRAs. When you contribute to a 401k, you don't do so directly. It is deducted from your paycheck before it hits your account. This makes it easier to save first and then budget for those of us who have a tendency to spend money as soon as we get it. And it also makes it easier to simply automate your savings. But this doesn't mean that the IRA isn't good. 
and that they don't have their merits. An IRA doesn't include the same match that a 401k would, but the tax benefits are very similar. But you do have some extra flexibility that comes in an IRA that you don't get with a 401k. While there are some restrictions to what you can buy in your IRA, like options on margin and some future contracts, you can generally choose from all the stock, mutual fund, index fund, and ETF options your brokerage provides, unlike the 401k, which pre-curates your bundles for you. Now, it's rarely advisable to withdraw your money from your IRA, but things do happen. And when they do, it's far easier to manage your money in an IRA as opposed to a 401k in many cases. 401ks generally require withdrawals to be approved by your plan's administrator or have rules around when you can do so. For example, your administrator may not allow you to withdraw funds until you've had the account for a certain period of time. In any case though, early withdrawals will likely result in steep penalties that you are better off avoiding. With few exceptions of course, you aren't allowed to withdraw your funds penalty free from a retirement account until you're 59 and a half. On the other hand, do you have a spouse that isn't working? Well, you can contribute to your spouse's IRA as well. The current limit is $7,000 for an IRA and Roth IRA combined. If you're older than 50, then you get a catch-up bonus and can contribute up to $8,000 in each account. This means if you max out your Roth and traditional IRA as well as your spouse's traditional and Roth IRA, you can have $14,000 tax advantage available each year to put towards your retirement. Note that if you make too much money, you can't invest the full amount into a Roth IRA. You can check your contribution limit on irs.gov or with an easy Google search. This income limit does not apply to a traditional IRA. There is much more to know when it comes to retirement accounts. We're here to give you a baseline, but be sure to consult a financial advisor, your plan administrator, or irs.gov for more information on the various plans and the benefits they provide. While retirement accounts are common, you can also contribute to tax advantage accounts for education and health costs. The most common health plans are the HSA and the FSA. HSAs and FSAs allow you to make pre-tax contributions that can be used for qualifying health purchases, such as medications or to cover your deductible. These coverages are wide and you can often pay for daily needs such as skincare products in these accounts. Some FSAs in particular have employer contributions. Although, note that FSA funds must be used within the calendar year. So if you have low to no health expenses, you're probably better off with an HSA. Unlike their FSA counterparts, HSAs can also be invested and grow tax-free. On top of that, withdrawals for medical expenses are also tax-free. That is a triple tax advantage when used for medical expenses, and if not, you at least get the same advantages that your IRA or 401k would get. The last major category is the tax advantage accounts that cover education expenses, with the most common being the education savings account and the 529 plan. Contributions in both of these accounts grow tax-free and withdrawals are also tax-free. These accounts must have a beneficiary. For Coverdell ESAs, that beneficiary must be under the age of 18. 529 plans are state sponsored. So depending on the state that services your 529, you could be entitled to tax deductions and credits for your contributions. You can now roll over the funds you didn't use in a 529 plan over to a Roth IRA with no tax implications. This means that if you don't end up using it for education for some reason, it can still operate as another tax-free retirement account for you. The Coverdell Education Savings Account, or ESA for short, allows you to save for college expenses as well as those K-12 expenses. Although, there is a contribution limit to this account type that phases out depending on your income. So we've gone through all the tax advantage accounts, but it's important to note that this isn't the only way for you to invest. Depending on your investment goals, taxable accounts may benefit you as well. Just like most major brokerages will offer tax advantage options, they will have taxable investment options as well. At first, it almost sounds like you should never dabble in these when you can get free money in your Advantage accounts. But these types of accounts do provide you with some benefits that will come in handy when it comes to your short-term goals. One important advantage is that there's no minimum withdrawal age or withdrawal restrictions. Before choosing a tax advantage account like these, make sure you understand the withdrawal restrictions intimately. Retirement accounts cannot be withdrawn while you're young. HSAs can't be used for non-medical expenses and education accounts for education expenses without incurring penalties. If for some reason you have the funds that needed to be used before a certain age or for other means, then you'll need to store these in normal taxable accounts. For example, placing your money in an investment is a great way to save for purchases that may be far down the line. Not tomorrow, but around 10 or more years. This way you don't find yourself withdrawing money from your account during a downturn. This can be items such as cars, a down payment on a home, or fun toys like watches or jewelry are great options to fund with your investments. If you aren't at retirement age by then and your money is parked in mostly traditional IRAs and 401ks, then you may be out of luck. Note that in an IRA, you are allowed to withdraw your contributions before 59 and a half. 
just not any of the capital gains, dividends, and interest you accrue in the account. You also don't have to deal with pesky restrictions. While it's ill-advisable for most investors, you can trade whatever you'd like in these accounts. A taxable account can also be a great place to turn to once you've maxed out your tax advantage accounts. If you've hit this milestone, congratulations, but keep going. Start saving in your taxable accounts. Just because you don't get the free money benefits, you'll still get the earnings on your investments. So in general, when picking between taxable and tax advantage accounts, take this into consideration. Are you on track to hit your retirement goals? What do your health expenses look like? Do you want to pay for your kids' college fees? Invest in tax advantage accounts to secure your future. With your taxable accounts, ask yourself, do I have any large payments on the horizon? Might I need to withdraw some funds before 59 and a half? Are there any investments that I want to do that I can't do in my advantage accounts? And there's many more nuances in tax advantage accounts like down payments on a home that we'll save for another video. But until then, make sure to check out all the resources linked in the description below as they're what I use or would use in specific situations, including the best budgeting program in the history of the internet.